I got out of the hospital a few months ago, but I can't forget about the stump. I never ran past the stump. Never. Except for once. The stump had been there for years, at the edge of where I turned around on my runs. Right at that point where I knew I would have a hard time getting back without walking. Except for that day. Last spring, around noon on a Saturday. Gentle breeze. High 70s. The sun dipping behind the clouds every few minutes. Perfect weather. Something about the daylight had always made me feel insecure. It was the night we were always supposed to be wary of. The shadows and the silence when the bugs would stop making noises. That's when you were supposed to worry. That's when the hairs were supposed to raise. When everything felt wrong. Not during the day, though. Not when everything was supposed to be safe. That was never how I worked, though. I was always wary of the daytime growing up. I never had nightmares at night. My nightmares were during nap times. During the day, when everyone else thought that the world was safe. I grew up as a cautious type of kid. I was afraid of a lot of things. Being alone used to matter so much more. I slept in my parents' bed until I was four or five, and even after that I felt uneasy sleeping alone. Most kids feel safe if they bundle up enough in their blankets, but I never felt safe. I always felt as if I were laying on an island surrounded by evil, and nothing I could do could protect me from that. Back in high school, running was easier. I could eat what I wanted and run whatever I felt like. My run times really never got affected by those things. I was a quick kid, too. I was running low five-minute miles. One time, I even ran a 450 mile. Not really competition speeds for college, but pretty good for a kid who just enjoyed going to city runs on the weekends. I used to imagine myself as a gazelle, running from a cheetah or some other large cat. The cats win, sometimes. But the gazelle has form over power, grace over strength. When chased, the gazelle will take every step with the intent to survive. That need to live. That was the past. After all that time, running six-minute miles hurt. I became more of a seven-minute mile type, which was fine. I wasn't racing anymore, just doing it for fun. For me, running had always been a form of meditation. About a mile or so into a run, everything would loosen up, and it would become easier to stride out. The stress on the body always felt good and pushed my mind to concentrate on the moment, to decompress, to re-evaluate. On that Saturday, everything felt right. Everything was more than fine. It was the perfect day. I was approaching the stump and I felt amazing. The best I had felt on a run in years. Years. I approached the stump and I hurtled like a track star. I didn't feel like I scraped anything. It was a clean jump. But I still heard a scratching sound. I didn't turn back. I was just in the zone. Birds and other animals in the woods were common on my runs. I ended up running another mile into the woods. I had never been that deep in. I was probably around five miles from the house when I saw a bit of smoke in the distance. I knew that there were other trails in the woods, but the trail I used was the nice one. The trail that the sun could touch almost all day. It was a cottage. That's where the smoke was coming from. The random cottage's chimney out deep in the woods. Totally not fit for anything to live in, but there it was. Something about the way the house sat on its foundation made it seem to be twisted. Somehow abnormal. The windows were uncharacteristically high, almost beginning at chest level. I started to run in place, considering whether or not to keep moving forward or to turn back. The curtains in the window had some sort of floral pattern. I didn't want to trespass. I never knew who the woods really belonged to out there. Suddenly, the curtain was thrown back, and the figure behind the window was looking at me, barely peeking over the base of the window sill. The eyes were wide. I turned and I ran toward home. It seemed so far. It took me a very long time to make it back to the woods I was familiar with. I just kept running, 
pumping my arms and moving my legs, breathing strong, inhale, strong, exhale, strong, inhale, strong, exhale, focus, focus, equal breathing, equal breathing. That's when I saw the stump, except it didn't look the same, not how I was used to seeing it. Granted, I had never approached the stump from that side before, but I knew, I knew that there was something wrong. My chest tensed up a little bit more. I slowed down to give some rest to my hips. There was some sort of lump on the tree stump that I'd never seen. Some type of cancer. The closer I got, the less the lump looked like a part of the tree. It looked like some kind of matted hair, clumped and moist. I had slowed down to almost a walk. I was just a few strides away from the stump when the moist lump opened its eyes. It was some type of animal, covered in dark brown fur that almost camouflaged the stump's bark. It was only after the eyes opened that I realized both of the animal's long arms were draped over my side of the stump. The head was far behind the stump, all I could see were the eyes peeking over like the animal was hiding from me. Hi, Alexander. <laughs> Alexander the Stranger, the Runner, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> don't look surprised. You don't remember me? We used to be so close. You slept on top of the bed, and I slept below. It said. I looked at the arms of the animal covered in hair, powerful looking. I couldn't bring myself to speak at first. I hesitated. Uh, are you the devil? Oh, Alex. The devil is just a story. <laughs> I am very real. <laughs> I'm you. I'm not you. I'm something different. Something blue, something better, it said. The animal started to tap the log's bark with all of its fingers. Its way of speaking seemed to trail off on certain words in a weird, distracted tone. I, I need to go. I, I want to go home, I said. I was looking at the hands of the animal, at the claws. It was tapping its fingers against the bark. I noticed my breathing wasn't rapid. I wasn't out of breath at all from the run. Instead, I was barely breathing at all, like I kept forgetting to take another breath every few seconds. I turned my head to look back at the cottage quickly to see if anything was coming from that direction. Nothing was there. I quickly turned my head back forward to keep my eyes on the creature behind the stump. Oh, now, Alex... Don't you worry about Mother. You'll never get to meet her. You'll never get to meet her, Alex. Mm, that's what I'm here for. You shouldn't have looked. Didn't you learn never to peek under the bed, Alex? Mm, triple X, not the sex. Not the sex. <laughs> you aren't going where you want to go. This isn't the trail home. The trail of tears, the trail of fears. We're going to do something else. It said. Up until that point, the eyes had been wondering, contemplating what the next words would be. The animal seemed to enjoy the rhymes. Every rhyme would strike some sort of emotional chord with my childhood. The shows I watched. The things I would say growing up. Then, the animal's eyes locked right into mine. The things I'm going to do to you, Alex. Oh, <laughs> oh you haven't lived until you've... <sighs> The things I will do to your innards, the belly inside. I don't want to ruin the surprise, but... Oh, 
the things we are going to do. It said. I heard it clack its teeth together a few times. I swallowed and reminded myself to breathe. I made myself say something. Uh, please don't, was all that came out. I couldn't see its mouth, but I could imagine its smile. It was in the eyes. Everything about the animal was inhuman. Except for the eyes. Baby blues. They could have been my eyes. The eyes squinted a little in an expression mixed with intent. Are you going to pee yourself? Are you going to piss? <laughs> Little Alex pissed the bed, pissed the bed, and slept in the shed. You can't hide from me, Alex. You can't run away. This is our moment together. <laughs> Are you going to pee-pee, cry to mother? I used to lick it up. Every time I would lick it all up. I would suck the bed dry after a good soiling. <laughs> what it must taste like after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> I've waited, Alex. I've waited to taste it from the source. Pure, unfiltered. I followed you for a very long time. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead and do it for me. Do it for me, Alex. I just want to smell it. <laughs> the animal said. I heard it lick its lips and start clicking its teeth. I could hear them like pieces of metal clacking together. And then, the animal slowly raised its head above the stump. There was no smile. Just a wide mouth of teeth. Row upon row into the blackness of its throat, as if the teeth would never end once something strayed past the animal's hairy lips. No, was all I could say. No. <laughs> oh, Alex. We know no won't go. No. <laughs> I'm going to step over this stump, and you are going to let me do it. <laughs> All the dreams are about to happen. Let me suck on it. Your hand, your foot, your leg, your flesh. Just a nibble. Just the tips. The animal began to laugh, seeing the teeth, hearing the laughter, the depths of the animal's almost human voice. Scratchy, like the voice was being filtered through burning coals on fire. My bladder let out everything. The moment that happened, the animal stopped laughing and threw its head back in the air to take in the smell. I could see its nostrils expand to an unreasonable size. Maybe it was fear. Maybe that was why. Once I realized it was going to keep its head back a moment, I shot into the edge of the woods to the right. That day was my best run in so long that I had to chance it. I had to try to escape. To run for my life. Miles. I still had miles until I would make it back home. And I wasn't on any trail. I was just running through the middle of the woods, hitting the dead pine needles with my feet. Needles that were never cleared by anyone. You could have buried anything in those woods. If something disappeared out there, that would have been it. The animal realized a few seconds after I broke the tree line that I wasn't going to wait. I didn't hear it talk, but I did hear it start moving behind me. The movement was what kept me sprinting, kept me pushing myself. 
I heard the legs. There seemed to be so many of them. And the trees. The animal was so strong that every few breaths I was taking I would hear a great tree get splintered or another tree fall down. It was gaining on me. Another tree fell. I could hear the animal breathing. Alex, it said. Alex. I couldn't turn around. I didn't want to. If it weren't for the terrain, I would have closed my eyes, hidden deep inside myself, and hoped to wake up alive. The breathing was so close, almost right next to my ears. I didn't want to see. I didn't want to see the moment happen. I wanted to try to fight until the very end. And that's when I found another trail. Out of nowhere, it was going in the same direction as the main trail I'd always ran down. I didn't think of anything besides getting home and escaping. I opened up my stride and I did my best to breathe correctly. Pump my arms. Perfect form. Perfect form. Not slamming my feet. Not arching my back too much. Staying forward. Letting my core be involved. It was the most important run of my life. I was the gazelle. Breathe out. I had to be. Breathe in. I needed to be perfect. Breathe out. I needed to live. Breathe in. I knew I had a chance if I could sustain the pace, maintain, and not look back. Even on the trail, I could still hear the animal crashing through the woods behind me, as if the trail wasn't wide enough for whatever size the animal must have been. I didn't want to think about how massive it was, how easily the animal was going to tear me apart, how my skin was going to feel sliding off my bones. I tried to keep my mind on the run, on the breathing, on staying consistent, pushing off with each step long strides. I could make it if I kept the form, kept the breathing, ignore the pain in my shins and my thighs, how my hamstrings were starting to pull with the strain I was putting myself under, forcing myself to open up my stride. I was past muscle failure when I ran past the stump. I wasn't sure how I was doing what I was doing, but I knew I wanted to live, knew that if I kept that in my mind, I could do it. I was so close. I saw the edge of the woods. And there was maybe a quarter of a mile before I was out. I wasn't sure how I'd never seen the trail I was on. It appeared that the trail would connect with the main trail before the end. I was there. I was going to make it. The animal kept running after me. It must have had so many legs smashing through the bushes and tearing apart all the trees. Ten feet away from the wood line, I took a step. But my foot didn't land right. The animal had caught me by grabbing a hold of my foot. I was pulled to the ground. My head hit something while I was being flipped upside down. The animal raised me up to its face and spoke. Alex, I love games. I told you that you couldn't run. Was that torture for you? I let you get this far. <laughs> The animal's tongue came out of its mouth. Long and grotesque, the tongue slipped down my shorts to taste the urine. It was a violating sensation. Sandpaper. If I hadn't already done so, I would have urinated myself again. Mm, salty. The animal said. I was shaking. There's a certain type of anticipation that the body experiences when the mind knows everything is about to end. I could feel it in the back of my neck. A kind of tingle. Instead of forgetting to breathe, I couldn't get enough air. My lungs were a vacuum. I was upside down but raised high enough to be eye level with the animal. The creature was something old and eternal. The hair matted in odd places, patches of scales, sharp joints of a being that should have died when the planet was young. My heart ached to be so close to home, but instead be looking at true evil. The monster, the devil, to see the matted hair and the black line over the blue eyes. Oh, Alex, sweetie, no tears. Now, now, do 
stop screaming. No one can hear you in this terrible dream, the animal said. The smell was too complicated for human noses to understand. It was disgusting and as hot as a furnace. My skin felt tighter after each breath from the creature. And the animal was right. I was screaming. I didn't even realize it. My mind was in so many places I couldn't think of anything to do. I was trapped. Caught. Please! The only word I managed to get out. Don't mind if I do, boy. What happened next was so fast. I was instantly flipped right side up and watched as the animal opened its mouth wide. All those teeth seemed to be infinite. An impossibly deep throat. A part of my mind thought I was looking into hell itself. There was no fire. Just the heat of it. There was only teeth. The animal's tongue slid out of its mouth and wrapped around my leg and drifted up. I tried to struggle away, but there was nowhere to go in that amount of time. I saw my leg slowly being pulled into the mouth. The end. I closed my eyes. My skin slid off the bone like the icicle on a popsicle stick. I felt the tug, the pressure, and then heard a pop and feeling of release. At first, I couldn't tell if the fire that shot up my leg was the heat from the animal's mouth or the pain. It was searing. I couldn't help but look, see what had happened. I was bleeding everywhere, so much blood drenching the animal's face. I realized why the animal's fur was all matted. It had its eyes closed, enjoying the blood spraying all over it. Half of my leg was gone, disappeared in the animal's mouth. The pain was everywhere and I was surprised that I had not immediately gone into shock. I knew that I needed to keep my head together. I needed to concentrate. Then I heard the crunching. The animal started to chew. It was eating my leg. It dropped me to the ground. It seemed to be caught up in the sensation, like it hadn't eaten in years, and maybe it hadn't. I didn't care. I needed to escape. I needed to get home. Home. I was almost in my backyard. I was ten feet away. There was so much blood. I knew I had only a few minutes, maybe seconds. I needed to get to my backyard. I needed to crawl. I rolled over to my stomach and I moved every remaining limb as fast as I could. The animal's mouth was full. I had the notion that it didn't want to stop chewing. It paused, as if to decide whether it should just enjoy what it had or to catch me. Maybe it paused intentionally. By the time the animal made the decision to lunge at me, I had rolled the rest of the way into my backyard. I had done it. I made it back. I rolled to my back. I knew I needed to stop bleeding. Seconds mattered. I ripped off all of my clothes and tore them to tie a tourniquet. I pulled the knots tight and covered the stump that remained of my leg. My heart was still beating. I needed to hydrate. I needed to. I needed to get to a doctor. I laid on my back at the edge of my backyard, having saved myself from the animal that chased me through the woods. I passed out. I woke up an instant later. Maybe it was hours, I couldn't tell with the sun. I looked over. Maybe it had all just been a dream, a nightmare, and I had dehydrated on my run. It was a relieving feeling, but after a moment the clouds in my head started to clear. It wasn't a dream. At the edge of the woods, it was there, peeking behind a tree, somehow hiding the true size of itself. The animal. It was dangling a shredded running shoe in one of its hands. My running shoe. I heard a slow crunching sound. A steady chewing. The animal was still chewing on my bones. It began to speak again, except its voice had changed to the voice of my mother. Alex. Alex. Wake up, sweetheart. 
It's time to go outside and play. Go off and play in the woods. Don't you want to come back, honey? Do come back. Maybe tomorrow? Yes? Get your five miles in. Get your ten miles in. I'll see you then, dear. I will see you then. I never could figure out what made the animal stop. How it wasn't able to move past the wood line. Or even how I knew I would be safe if I made it to my backyard. It wasn't really under my bed as a child. The cottage. Mother. I didn't understand. I crawled back to my house. The bleeding had slowed, but the bandages were soaked through with my blood. I was really lightheaded. I thought I was going to pass out again when I had to push the sliding glass door open. I managed to make a phone call before passing out again. The doctors didn't know what to think. I told them it was a gator that got me. No one would have believed anything else. No one questioned me further with that information either. People rarely show up at an ER with a leg bitten off. No doctor would have the experience to really question my story anyways. I have never gone back in the woods. Never even thought about it. I could never go back. Sometimes, if I wake up before the sun rises, I'll be drinking my coffee. And right when the sun hits the tree line, I'll see it. The animal peeking out behind a tree, never the same tree. What is left of my leg will always ache, and I'll feel the sensation of being lowered into the animal's mouth again, and the tip of my leg feels that fire, the tip of my stump. Once the twilight of morning is past, the animal will duck behind whatever it's hiding behind and disappear. It never speaks. It never does anything else but look at me. I never see the animal's teeth, but I don't ever have to.